There's no question that knowing how to CAD is a bit like a superpower. You take this idea in your head and then make it reality with powerful 3D software. But it can definitely take a long time to do certain things and certain geometries just feel almost impossible to recreate. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some killer CAD tips that I've picked up over the years to speed up your workflow and unlock some geometric potential to design almost anything. Let's get started. And we'll start with something so simple, I bet you've never tried it. Did you know you can copy and paste fully dimensioned sketches? Yes, that's right. This works in Autodesk Fusion, Onshape, and I believe it also works in SolidWorks, but I haven't been able to test it myself. So as an example, what I have here is a rough draft CAD. And what I mean by draft CAD is that this is just thrown together really badly with bad modeling practices to help me flesh out an idea. And then after I do this, I can start on the final CAD which has the proper assembly and proper joints joining everything together. But this whole design is based around a really complicated revolve sketch right here. Now I really like the shape this creates, but it'd be a real pain to copy it over line by line, dimension and dimension to another document. So all you need to do is select everything, control C, and then go over to your other document, start a new sketch, and then control V. And just like that, you can dump a fully dimension sketch into a whole nother project. And at least in Fusion 360, it works totally fine. And on shape, I've done it within the same project. And from here, as long as you have everything sufficiently dimensioned, you can then move it to where you want. And I can grab this point here, bring it to the origin, and then it snaps in place. And with the document setup I have right now, white means fully constrained. Now this area, don't worry too much. That was just some rough geometry that I could clean up. But there you go. It's copied across everything that I need, all the dimensions and everything exactly how I want it. And this can save you a ton of time if you do a sketch in an area that you don't want, say you do a sketch in a component that was by mistake, you needed another component, you can copy it across. Or in this case, you can see you can copy it from a completely other document into a new one. So copy and pasting your sketches can save you a ton of time. Tip number two, you can reuse the same sketch for multiple features. This is really handy because it cuts down all the clutter in your timeline and means that that one sketch, you can get it exactly right and not worry about updating multiple sketches to change things where you might forget them, or you have lots of uh, projections that can break really easily, and then it makes a real pain. Using the same sketch for multiple features is really handy. For example, I've got that copied revolve sketch. What I've done with this is I've actually used it to do three separate revolves. I've got one here where I've just done the geometry selected there. Then I've got another one here to do this revolve. And then finally, I've got one more revolve for the end cap there. Now, again, this is in my draft CAD, so they're all separate bodies, but you can do this into separate components if you like, just making sure you select the correct component before doing the feature, but it can reuse the same sketch. I find this tip really handy when I'm doing extrudes for bores that will have screws in them, because often you'll have the, the pilot bore for the screw thread, then you'll have maybe a countersink for the head, and then you might even have like a hex sunk uh, uh, cut for holding like a hex nut or that sort of thing. This can be all done with one sketch using three separate extrusion commands that will actually let you start or stop from different areas. So for example here, I've got this one sketch that has the, the pilot bore for the, for the thread, then it's got a counter bore for the head, and then it's got that hex cut for the, for the nut. And you can see, for example, does the bore right through? But then what I've done is I've done a cut for that nut. And you can do that even though the sketch isn't on that plane, by starting the sketch from object. So I've selected start from object, and then for the object, I've selected this face here. And I've cut down by three millimeters to remove material from that area, even though the sketch starts from here. And then finally, I did a cannibal for the head of the screw. And again, that was just a simple extrude cut there, which goes down a distance of four millimeters. By using the same sketch for multiple features, it really can tidy up your timeline, and it does help to keep things more organized and it's definitely just a more optimum way of 3D modeling your designs. My next tip is to take advantage of points as reference geometry when you're dimensioning and defining your sketches. Now you might've gone through the sketch workflow and seen these points, right? And wondered why the heck would I need a point? It's like, it's not even zero thickness if you extrude it, it's just a point in space that cannot be used for any solid geometry. Well, it's not there for solid geometry. In fact, points are only here to help you reference things within your sketch. And a great example of where they come in really handy is when you need to dimension two curves like this circle. So what I often do is I'll have a circle like a bore 
and I want it to be a certain distance away from the edge of the part because you know I want it to be strong enough if I'm 3D printing it. Now, how would you dimension this? How would you reference these two edges so they're a certain distance apart? Well, there's a few ways you can do it. For example, I can get some reference geometry like a line and I can draw from the center of the circle up to this point here. And I can give this circle a dimension of, let's go with 100. So if I know this circle is 100 millimeters in diameter, then I could say, okay, well, the top of this edge for, this, for the rectangle should be, what's that? 50 is, is the radius, so 50 plus five is 55. Then I know it's gonna be five millimeters above. And sure, this method will work, but it's gonna be really annoying if I need to change the diameter of this bore, because then I'll need to update that dimension by figuring it out manually. No, there's a way better way to do it, and that is using points. So I'm gonna grab, grab a point here, and I'm gonna put the point in on the uh, coincident intersection between the circle and that line right there. There's our little point, you can barely see him. But now what I can do is dimension from that point to the edge of the rectangle, and then I can say, okay, let's make that five. Now, if I update this bore, let's make it 110 again, it'll automatically update and move the edge of that rectangle up to keep that five millimeter distance. I use points like this all the time with my 3D printing because for motor mounts and that sort of stuff, it's a really, really effective way of dimensioning to the edge of something from a circle or a curve of some kind. By combining those lines and points, you can have a point intersect from anything and then from that point, you can dimension to that thing. It's really powerful and I highly recommend taking advantage of points for your dimensioning and uh, defining of your sketches. And just on the top of that, don't be afraid to use copious amounts of construction geometry in your sketches. I am a strong advocate for using construction geometry and constraints wherever possible over dimensions because dimensions must be manually updated and often calculated to keep things in certain areas, whereas constraints are adaptable and they can let the design flow and change in a really useful manner. And one way I find that construction geometry and constraints are really useful over dimensioning is stuff like these boards. Now I just showed this sketch in the previous example, but you notice that there's no dimension of the center of the bore to the edge, right? Instead, I've got this circle, which is offset and it's construction geometry. And construction geometry is not used for any of the final processes in your features. It is just there to help set up your sketch. Now what I've done with the circle is I've given it tangential constraints. So these little, little icons there, tangent, tangent, tangent and I can just delete them and read them, do them to show you how this works. So this circle has a concentric constraint to the middle of the bore, so it's always gonna be concentric to that bore. And what I can do is I can select this edge, hold down shift, select that construction geometry circle, and then right click tangent. And then I can do the same again for this edge, and the same again for this bottom edge. What that's gonna do is keep it perfectly centered between those three edges, even if I update the design, because this is based on previous sketches, to give this area more thickness. So if I go back to that tab, which is here, you see I've dimensioned it to 10 millimeters, I can make it 14. You know, say I need it to be chunkier for some reason. Finish, update. Now you can see that that circle has expanded, but it's still tangential, which means the center of the bore is still centered. So if you haven't been using construction geometry in your sketches, you're just dimensioning everything, please start using construction geometry wherever possible with constraints because it's adaptable. Like you can see here, I've made my life so much easier by allowing the design to update itself rather than having to go in and update everything with changes because it's all based on dimensions. And next up, did you know you could put calculations straight into dimensions? For example, this is a distance for a bearing. And because it's a revolve, it needs to be uh, the radius versus the actual entire diameter of that bearing. Now I know the bearing is 42 millimeters in diameter, and it's very simple to work out 42 divided by two, right? But you can make mistakes, we're human. So by entering 42 divided by two into the calculation for the dimension itself, well, it does it for me. It just made it 21. There you go, just like that. And you can do way more complicated calculations. Like you could do, let's say it's gonna be four times two, right? There you go, eight. You could do all sorts of stuff. Just chuck the calculations you want into the dimensions themselves and let your CAD program do the heavy work for you. My next tip is to get comfortable working with surfaces. You can use surfaces for so many things, but so many people are scared to use them 
because there's zero thickness geometry. Ooh, scary. Knowing a little bit of surface modeling is really, really useful. And I highly recommend trying it out, at least at a limited level. And one really easy way to use surfaces is to cut solid bodies in an inter interesting, useful way so they can be reassembled later in a much more elegant manner than just a plain cut right across the whole thing. So in this example, I've got this solid block and I wanna cut it into two different bodies. And I'm gonna do that using a surface revolve. So I've got a surface sketch here, this is the profile, and then I'm gonna do an axis here. So sketches between solid bodies and surface bodies work exactly the same, but instead of a solid body resolve, resulting from your uh, revolve, you end up with this zero thickness surface like this. This is a new body and you can't use this for anything like printing or anything unless you seal it. But what I'm gonna use this surface for is to cut this block into two pieces. To do that, you're gonna modify, split body, and then I'm gonna select that block. And then splitting tool is my surface like that. And then there we go. So that's height the surface. And now I've got this block split into two in a way that is really interesting. And you couldn't really do this without using surfaces. This can get way, way more intricate. You can combine separate surfaces using the trim and stitch tool. You can offset surfaces from solid bodies by using the create offset tool. You can do patches. If you're interested in knowing how to do that sort of thing, let me know, I might do a surface tutorial in future. But for now, using it to cut solid bodies into separate ones for assembly later is really, really useful. It's something you should definitely add to your arsenal. Next up, we have Boolean operations, or as they know known in Fusion, uh, combine for some reason. Now, this is a really powerful way of getting separate bodies, separate solid bodies, and mixing them together in a way that makes a more complicated shape. With Boolean operations, you can combine separate bodies, you can subtract them from one another, or you can even create intersection bodies of between where two or more solid bodies actually meet and intersect. And it was only through using Boolean operations that I was able to create the spiral wheel you see here. So let me walk you through what I did. First, I created the revolve that I showed you before, and then I created a spiral geometry. So this body is completely separate. It's a separate body that spirals and it's sort of going, phasing through the rest of the solid geometry, right? It's not part of it yet, but it will become part of it. And I'm going to do that by using Boolean operations to cut away geometry and then combine geometry. So I cut away the areas I don't want, and then I effectively weld on the geometry of the spiral to the hub. With the first Boolean or combine operation, I've got the spiral as the target body. And then for the tool bodies, I'm using the entirety of the hub. So it's gonna go red to show that it's cutting away. You can see that the inside of that spiral is getting cut and the outside is being left. So they're gonna be cut into two effectively. And I'm making sure I tick keep tools because they're part of the geometry I'm going to be reusing. So keep tools like that. And you can see now that the spiral's being cut. I actually don't want this detail at all. So I'm just gonna hide it for now. Now the spiral actually rests on two separate components that actually assemble later. So I actually need to cut this spiral again into two separate parts. Now again, I'm using a surface to do that. This surface revolve is then doing a uh, cut to turn this spiral into two separate parts like that. Then I did a pattern because I want lots of them. So I patterned it uh, in a rotary pattern three times. And then this is where the magic happens. We're going to combine these bodies back into the original geometry to make something far more complex than I could ever have ever modeled in one go. The first combine takes those three little bits of spiral that are cut off at the end and combines them with the end hub. But I made sure I've got keep tools unticked because I don't want to keep the bodies for anything else. And then the second combine does exactly the same thing, but it's for the rest of that wheel hub. So the target body is that cylinder. And then I've got those three extra spirals that I can combine. And there we go. Boolean operations are the bread and butter of cadding complicated objects. And I, if you haven't played with them, definitely give it a shot because this is just scratching the surface on what you can do with them. Another way I find myself using Boolean operations all the time is to like mash two components together so that one creates space for the other when you assemble it. And a great example of that is these little indexing features I've got here. So they are drawn onto one component, but they're not on this other component, this hub. They don't have those features. Now I could reuse a sketch and do, do various cuts and extrudes and that sort of thing, or I could just do another, another combine and I can just do a combined cut, keep the, keep the tools, keep the parts, and then bam, just like that, it's cut away the areas I need. 
And it's a really, really quick way of making sure your parts fit together when you go and assemble your project. But there's one more really important thing to talk about and that is adding offsets because the real world isn't perfect. So if you do a combine and you cut away one object's geometry into another and try to print it, well, it's zero distance between the two parts that are trying to intersect. And 3D printing is not a perfect process. You're probably gonna get some interference and the parts might not go together. So you need to add clearances in to make sure that they do, even if your printer's a little bit off. And my favorite way to add clearances to parts that I'm gonna be machining or 3D printing is to add clearances as an offset right at the end and have that clearance number as a parameter that I can change in a parameter table so I can easily update it across the entire document instead of going through every single offset. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna drop down to modify and go to change parameters and it's very similar to do this in Onshape. And you see under user parameters, I've got a parameter I've created and I've called it printing offset. To create your own user parameters, you just go to the plus icon and you can name them anything you like, like print offset like that. And then you give them a value, right? So what I've done here with this one is I've given it a value of minus 0.2 millimeters and that's gonna be the offset of the surfaces for my printing clearances. So I've got that and I've called it clearance for 3D printing. And now I'm gonna to go to the part where I want to create those clearances. So I've got this hub here. Again, remember it was cut using the Boolean operation. I'm gonna modify, press pull, and then I'm gonna select the surfaces I want to move by the amount of my clearance. So I'm gonna hold down control and select this one, 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 going around to all the ones I want, just like that. And then instead of entering a number, I'm gonna enter print, Printing offset, it pulls it up, there you go. And it's done my printing offset of 0.2. I can do this across the entire document for everything I wanna offset for 3D printing. And then let's say I go to print it and oh, 0.2 still isn't really enough of clearance. I need some more clearance for my printer. Well, you go back to your parameter table, then I can update that to let's say 0.4. I've got a really sloppy printer. Okay, there we go. And that is just updated to 0.4, just like that. And using a section view, you can see that that clearance is indeed there. You can do this across the entire document and if you need to update it, it's just one parameter to change versus who knows how many scattered across your entire timeline. If you have a favorite CAD tip that I haven't mentioned in this video, then please leave it in the comments below because I would love to see it. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye. No, I said CAD tip, not cat tip. You always want to be the center of attention, don't you? It's a big boy. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. <laughs>